and welcome. This morning we're going to take a quick look at landing this aircraft. I know, I know, there are quite a few good tutorials out there on the subject already, but uh, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. The tutorials I've seen so far all recommend that you land at air speeds of about 280 to 290 kilometers per hour. Basically, just land faster. Uh, and that works pretty well with the current modeling. But, uh, the problem I have with that is that the uh, Russian MiG-29 pilot's manuals that I've seen so far all refer to touching down softly at around 250 to 260 kilometers per hour. In fact, that 280 to 290 number is the speed at which you start leveling out prior to even crossing the threshold. So it stands to reason that you'd be landing at a lower airspeed than that. So, just for giggles, let's try uh, flying a circuit uh, using one of those manuals. I'm going to use the uh, pilot technique and uh, aerial navigation for the MiG-29, second edition revised. One thing that you realize when reading the text is that it's all about the end game. The closer you get to touchdown, the more specific the text becomes, right down to air speeds, height above the ground, and even the final tack setting. Uh, as you leave the inner marker. So let's give it a shot. I guarantee this won't be as smooth as I'd like for a tutorial, but let's see what we see. So here we go. Right now we're heading over to Nalchik to play for a bit. And pull up the uh, controls indicator and turn on the panel lights. It'll give you a better view of the gauges. First, let's dial up Nalchik and let them know that we're inbound. Nalchik, 107. Okay, the local pressure is 722.16, so let's dial it, that into the altimeter. Uh, a little bit too far, let's come back. There we go. And set the navigation system to return. I'll use the uh, director's circle to uh, help orient myself uh, from time to time, but we won't be paying attention to the uh, directed altitudes for this flight. I should mention that right now we're at 68% of maximum gross weight, so we're not exactly feather light for this landing. Okay, as we get closer to touchdown, uh, the instruments that you should keep an eye on are the uh, VVI, the HSI for that big desired course arrow, the tachometer, and the uh, angle of attack indicator on the left side of that gauge. As we uh, turn on to the circuit for the up one leg, I'll set the nav system to Passat or landing, and uh, that way that big HSI arrow will show the runway's orientation uh, in reference to us. Okay, here we go. Nav system set to landing. Keep an eye on that big desired course arrow as we make our uh, turn. We want it to end up straight up and down, pointing in the direction we're heading. Coming round, just about there. And there we go. Now we're heading in the same direction as the runway, just offset to its right. And this is our upwind leg. I'm going to fly this leg uh, at around uh, 600 kilometers per hour with a height above the ground of 1,000 meters, more or less. We'll get a uh, good view of the runway and uh, the area around it as we uh, fly past. Earlier I mentioned the end game. Both the uh, outer and inner marker beacons play an important role. There's the outer marker beacon down there, those uh, small white buildings. And there's the inner marker beacon uh, down tucked in amongst the approach lights there. So now we have four turns coming up. Right now we're up on the uh, upwind lake with the uh, runway on our, coming up on our left. After we're past it, uh, we'll make turn number one. That'll be a 90 degree turn to the left for the crosswind leg. And we'll do that with a bank angle of 30 degrees. Ah, looks like somebody down there taxing for takeoff. We shouldn't pose any problem though. 
Just waiting until we get down to the end of the runway and then we'll make turn number one. A 90 degree turn to our left. Okay, here we go. 30 degree bank. Keep an eye on things as we come around. Start losing a bit of altitude now as we make this first turn. Um, you might be wondering why I chose Nalchik for this. Well, it's got a fairly short runway with a taxiway that comes in diagonally uh, part way down. And I was curious to see if doing it by the numbers we could uh, stop our rollout in time to take it without using the drag chute. Besides, I don't fly in and out of here uh, very often, and I thought it'd be fun to try a different airbase. Backing off the throttles just a bit, lose some airspeed, keep dropping a bit of altitude, and now I'm going to slip right into turn two. Our bank angle should be 35 to 40 degrees. Keep an eye on the desired course arrow. Now we want it pointing behind us as we begin our downwind leg. So vertical, but with the pointy end pointing down. We'll contact them in just a bit. Oops, we uh, lost just a little bit too much altitude maybe. I want to be up around 400 uh, for the uh, begin initiation of turn three. There's an Alchik in the distance. Let's uh, lower our landing gear and call up the control tower. And now we'll hear nothing but crickets until we are in the vicinity of the outer marker. That's when they'll finally call back with permission to land. Let's finish getting configured for landing, lowering the flaps, and do a visual check. Yep, flaps are lowered and leading edge slats are extended. Uh, whoops, I've gotten a little high and a little slow. My target speed for turn three is 400 kilometers per hour and my target uh, altitude um, is 400 meters above the ground. It could be a little bit lower, it could be a little bit higher, it's up to you. But the target speed is 400 kilometers per hour. Retrimming, let's see if I can get us uh, where we need to be. We'll begin turn three when we're about 10 to 11 kilometers uh, out, as per the manual. Take a look around, make sure the airspace is clear before we initiate the turn. And here we go. As per the manual, we're making this turn at a 45 degree bank and we will roll out when perpendicular to the uh, runway. Just keep an eye on the HSI desired course arrow. There's the field out in the distance, runway and approach lights. Now, as per the manual, our targets are 350 kilometers per hour at 350 meters altitude. And we're aiming for a point that's about 15 to 20 degrees off the runway. You can judge it visually or just off the HSI. Okay, here we go. You start this turn at a bank angle of 30 degrees and then adjust as necessary to pick up on the runway. When we roll out, we should be about five to six kilometers shy of the runway. And the outer marker will be directly ahead of us. As we exit the turn, we should be lined up with the runway and uh, have an altitude of about 250 to 300 meters above the ground. Yep, slipping a bit low. I am not doing this very well. Your goal is to cross the outer marker at a height of uh, 200 meters with an airspeed of 330 to 320 kilometers per hour and a vertical descent rate of about 3 to 5 meters. We're not going to meet that last one for sure. 
But let's continue on from here anyway. That's the outer marker. Let's turn on our landing lights and start down the glide slope. Reducing the throttles a bit. Engine RPM is reduced by about 2% or so. And there's the tower, finally answering our call from way back when. There's the inner marker with the runway just ahead of us. Our aim here as we cross the inner marker is to be at 50 to 60 meters above the ground with an airspeed of 300 to 310 kilometers per hour. Whoa, I'm not wild about these trees. Inner marker. As you leave the inner marker, your engine RPM should be roughly 77 to 79 percent. And our speed when we begin leveling off should be between 280 and 290 kilometers per hour. Begin leveling off at 8 to 10 meters. Slow our descent. And touch down at 260 on the HUD. Throttles to idle. We won't use the chute, we'll just begin braking. And we won't have any trouble at all stopping in time. We'll be able to take that taxiway directly to the terminal. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but if you're paying attention to the flight director circle on the HUD, we were below the altitude that it wanted us to be at for just about that entire uh, circuit. The only time we met it was just as we were about to touch down. I noticed in reading the real world manual for this aircraft, and also for, the, I think, the SU-27 as well, the altitudes cited are all lower than what we u end up using in the sim. At least for the sim's glide slope, anyway. Slowing down to 260 for the landing is a bit easier when you're not coming in quite as steep. But anyway, that was kind of fun. It was far from perfect, but hopefully you enjoyed it and you get some ideas. And now let's just park this thing. I'd like to make it over to Nalchik's racetrack in time for the first run. There's a pony there I want to bet on. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you. You have control.